you all. Today I'm going to be going over some CZ firearms. If you guys didn't know, CZ is one of my favorite manufacturers. They have a lot of good stuff out there. Unfortunately, I haven't even shot half, a quarter, a sixteenth of what they have to offer, but I do have a few here and a few behind me that I am going to go over today. Uh, this does not include Dan Wesson firearms, even though they are owned by CZ. And even if I was going to include the Dan Wesson discretion, it honestly wouldn't rank that high on the list. But I'm gonna go over what I have here right now. It's not gonna be necessarily a top 10, best to worst, worst to best, but I'm just gonna go over them and tell you guys my likes and dislikes. To start, some CZ firearms I've had at one point, but I no longer do have. That includes the CZ-83, the CZ-P-07, and the CZ-75D, the compact version. The CZ-83 was really too thick in the hand, shot 380 ACP, was really big, didn't care for it too much. The 75D, the compact 75 version, I didn't care for that one either. I ended up trading that one for a Gen 4 Glock MOS. The P07, I did not dislike that. I just had a P07 and P09 at the time, so I really didn't see the use for both at the time, but I hands down would have definitely kept the P07. I also forgot I had a CZ Rammy, a little sub sub compact. I did not like that one at all. I forgot what I traded that one for. But again, I do have a few here. I'm gonna go over these and let you know what I think about them. To start off, I'm going to start with the CZ P10C and CZ P10F. There is a S, a subcompact. I have not tried that one, but what I've done here, I took the P10F slide and put it on the P10C frame. And this is one of my favorite handguns. As of right now, this is my, if I had to leave the house, I'm taking this one, even over everything else. This handgun right here, it is phenomenal. I like the way it shoots right at the box. It's still bone stock, everything inside. Just added a Trigicon RMR, Surefire X300 on it. And it just, I don't know what it is. I can handle this one very, very well. Shoots flat, shoots soft, accurate, no issues there. Uh, right out of the box, good to go. And what I like about this frame, this is the Checkmate frame, being the Czech Republic. And a full-size frame, this one's made in the USA. They changed some things up, no longer has a ambidextrous magazine release. And they changed the geometry of the magazine button. Don't really care for it too much. But this one, I've been planning on getting a thread barrel and a comp, I believe, by Parker Mountain Machine. So it has this little kind of ugly extra ledge of the frame sticking, extending past the slide. So I have not shot this one, but probably like five times in this configuration. It really is not nothing too special for me right now, but compact frame, long slide, love this one right here. I wouldn't mind a threaded barrel and a, threaded barrel and a comp on this one, but even as is, this is one of my favorite. Um, back here on this battle belt, I'm using a stuck right now. But I have a T-Rex arms holster for it on a Safari Land thigh, thigh system, and this is what's going in that. This actually took the place of the P226, which I think is just out of frame of you guys, the Mark 25, but man, I like this one right here. Next up, we have a classic, the CZ75, one of the Wonder Nines right here. This is probably the most popular and most produced CZ handgun. And it just has a great, great silhouette look to it. Uh, one thing that CZ is known for is having a very, very low low bore access. So this slide actually sits inside the frame. Your slide does not extend and barrel does not extend that far up over your hand when shooting. So these have a very, very, very soft recoil impulse. Uh, this one right here, the only modification to it is the wood grips. These are some Turkish wood grips. Um, it's gonna sound weird, but they smell really, really good. Uh, they actually pretty nice, especially if you wanna shoot with one hand with these. It has like a little thumb ledge. So you're able to really crank down and snug this firearm in your hand when you're shooting one hand. But usually they come with some rubber grips, plastic grips, something like that. And CZ is very popular. This model is very popular. So there's dozens of people making aftermarket grips for them. 
But one thing is you have a full size steel handgun that's not competition oriented with this particular one and you have no rail for any mounting any accessories. This one is one of the newer ones with the Omega trigger in it. Very nice gun to shoot. Would not be one of my most popular ones or first choice CZ handguns by any means, but if you want a classic, the CZ 75 is definitely one to look at. All right, we're going to start with the long gun now. And here we go. This is a CZ Bryn 805. There is a newer one out, the Bryn 2, which I'm not gonna say it looks better. It looks good, it looks different. Um, lighter and a bit more options as far as barrel length and caliber. But this is a very, very cool rifle right here, I think. It is piston driven. This one has a 16 inch barrel, chambered in 556, 223. I'm not sure if this generation has any other caliber options. I'm sure you can like get a one off barrel, something like that, in a weird caliber. They'll cost a lot, but the Bryn 2 that's offered in more thermal caliber, I believe, 556 and 762 by 39. Um, there's usually some comparisons between this and the SCAR. They do look alike. The all metal aluminum upper receiver, polymer lower, like you have on this one. And I'm not going to say which one came first, or I'm sure they. There is some a lot of similarities between them, but I've never shot a SCAR 16. I've shot a SCAR 17. As far as the build construction between the 17 and this one, I don't see any major difference. The SCAR has been reliable and this has been reliable. No issues here whatsoever. It is not one of my favorite 223, 556 rifles by any means. I definitely like ARs a lot more than other platforms when it comes to that. That's just me. There's nothing wrong with it, but me personally, I would not choose this one as like a go-to rifle, anything like that. The weight's not bad or anything, but just when it comes to control, stuff like that, it's just a training thing. So if you shot 10, 15,000 rounds through something like this before an AR or something like that, you wouldn't have a problem with it. But for me, this one, it's a cool gun to have around. Again, I do like CZ, and this is one of the nice ones to have. Going back to handguns, I have a CZ that I am not that big of a fan of, and that I found out they actually discontinued this year. And I am talking about the CZ 97. This one is different from all the other CZ handguns you guys will see today. This one is actually 45 ACP. And I'm not a fan of 45. Lots of people are. It's just me. I like nine more than 45. But this handgun here, I'm not a fan of it. I know it's popular in some small groups. Um, if it was that popular, I doubt they would have discontinued it. Uh, but one thing, I know they have like a barrel bushing that is similar to 1911, not similar, but the idea, the concept that this is a very, very accurate handgun. I've never shot this too much in excess, anything like that. So I can't say if it's more accurate than any other 45s out there. Build quality is nice. This is the only CZ I had to send back for repairs. There was something, a weak trigger or something like that. I forgot what it was. There was an issue, had to go back, they had to fix it. But after that, no issues whatsoever. Um, things I don't like about it, I might be recoil sensitive. Um, take that as you want. But one thing with it, you have this huge, huge firearm. It's probably over like 40 ounces or so. And the magazines, you get 10 rounds in these double-ish, half, one half stack magazines. So. You get something that's probably big, as big as 1911, you get two more rounds in that, but something that's big and heavy and you already, you know, have a magazine in this kind of configuration. I just say go double stack, get yourself 12 or 15 rounds. Um, Cause what I remember, I, a SIG P220, thinner magazine, same size, still had 10 rounds. I think they should definitely bump it up to about 12, 15 rounds to make it worth it. But now that I know they discontinued it, 
I might hold on to it a little bit longer. Does it say? I don't know. But yeah, definitely not one of my favorites. If you want to go to a 45, this is not one I would personally recommend. As far as the big 45s, I probably like a Sig P220 or FNX 45. I'm not that big of a fan of 45s and 1911s, I know, but this is just my opinion. All right, so we just went over one of my least favorite CZ handguns. Now going to one of my favorites. This is the CZ P09. And this is one of my favorite suppressor hosts right here. This has been one of my most reliable suppressor hosts too. So at a range outing one time, I took a Glock, the P226 Mark 25, and this one, I shot about 300 rounds in one setting through all of them. Well, a little bit more than 300. This one was able to chug through and not have any issues whatsoever. At the end, it just started barely spitting the casings out because it was so gunked up, but this went for such a long time without having any issues whatsoever. Even not as a suppressor host, this is a great gun, big 19 rounds in the magazine. Again, this has low bore access like the other CZ75s and those variants. I like the squared off trigger guard. I'm able to get a lot, a lot of my hand on here, a lot of real estate and keep this handgun down. And man, um, as far as the slide color and the optic, this is Delta Point Pro. I sent it off to somebody to get the slide seracoded and cut. I forgot who it was, but they did a good job. Fit still works. I've had this one longer. Yep, this is the longest CZ I've had. So this was the first one. This was the first one. So I want to say maybe five years or so that I've had this one. Never planned on trading it. It's been reliable. If I had to choose one, an alternative to go to, this would probably be third place after the Mark 25. And can't say enough good things about this one. If you're looking for a polymer frame hammer fire pistol, this would definitely be one of the ones you should look at. So next up, one that I like a lot is the CZ SP-01. This is very similar to the 75. It is a CZ 75 SP-01. This is a tactical version. Comes with a bit of a different shape. As you can see, this one does not have any kind of rail. And this one, you do get yourself a rail so you're able to mount what you want up there. The grips on these, I forgot who made them, but these grips are very nice as well. This one right here is very fun to shoot, very flat. But one thing I come across with these handguns right here, not so much the P10 or the P09, is that these slides are very, very thin. So usually with every other handgun, I usually take my hand like this, come across the slide like that. Uh, with these, it's going to be much better to pinch it. <laughs> There's been plenty of times where I try to go and I just miss the slide completely and my fingertips will actually rub against the controls here and I do not get a positive contact on the slide and my hand just flies off and the gun is empty, not charged, hot, something like that. Whatever the issue was that required me to move the slide, it's still there. Is this one of my favorite all metal hammer fired pistols? No. Is one of my it is it's one of my favorite ones for sure i still wouldn't this wouldn't be a go-to for me though because of the thin slide and everything but again that just takes training that would be easy to you know start going like that but it is a reliable handgun no issues with it whatsoever uh it has a very nice trigger this one has a better trigger than the 75 it has a better trigger than the PO9 stock. I forgot to mention the PO9 does have like a whole Cajun trigger, hammer, kit, everything like that. So that one's on a little bit unfair level uh, versus this one. But compared to other um, handguns in this category, that um, does have a nice trigger. So I wasn't sure which one I was going to do next. I got two more. I think I got, yeah, two more. I'll go ahead and do this one back here. This is a CZ TSO. 
Tactical Shadow Orange, I believe. This is their competition oriented handgun. Um, along with this, they make something called the Checkmate and the Parrot. Those are a thousand and then about two thousand dollars more than this one. Um, I'm not a competition shooter. I have done a few matches. I have not done a match with this yet, but that is what this is aimed for. So it comes with three magazines, 20 rounds on the magazines, much more expensive with these. These are $80. All your other steel magazines for your CZs will cost about $40 or so. Uh, with this one, you have a larger mag well to help with your reloads. Have a little shelf on your safety right there. You can push down on that. An extended magazine release. Get a positive contact on that. Let the magazines fall clear out by themselves. On this one, they do have a little thumb rest right there. So when you're shooting, you're able to put your thumb there, push down on the muzzle to help fight that muzzle flip right there. However, I believe this muzzle, excuse me, this little gas pedal thumb rest, it is too shallow. So when you actually do put your thumb there, it is not really enough. You only get about half of your thumb before you start hitting the slide, slide release. And you definitely, I think should extend maybe almost a quarter of an inch more out. You can buy extra ones that um, aftermarket ones that do extend out a little bit more and also those that swoop over and create their own little platform to match optics on. This is a very soft shooting handgun. I don't think it's fair to compare this to the other handguns because it is easily thousand dollars more than every other one here in the stock form so but i can't speak on it as a competition shooter but if you're looking for a very very fun range toy which is what this is for me you should give it a try i do think more there are other handguns out there that are equally heavy great quality and everything but um cost a little bit less but one thing i can say for sure i've had um like the SIGs, what else costs a little bit more? The Beretta 92X, Walther Q5 SF. One thing that any other handgun that I've had under $2,000, the Wilson Combat, those are a different story. Uh, those, I'm not gonna include that into this conversation. But this is under $1,000 and this slide to fame, frame fitment right here is impeccable. So if you take any other handgun that I've ever had, you're gonna have like a little wobble, even if it's just the tiniest amount of wobble. There is no wobble in this slide right here. Even if it's right here closed, or when I even pull it back, like right here, it does not move. There is no space between the slide and frame right here. That is something that is, that is nice. You're paying for that. The fitment on here is amazing. I have not shot groups to see uh, how well it does, but you know, this gun is a better shooter than me. So even before I get to that, you know, it's gonna outshoot you, so don't worry about that. But this, the craftsmanship and everything, like just pinch some, let's see. You hear that? It's a nice gun, but if you like just pinch the slide there, if I pull it back, just a little wobble, just a little, and I'm sure all your other handguns in the same price range, they're gonna do that. But there's just no side to side wobble, nothing there with this handgun here. Very nicely made. All right, so last, the handgun or the CZ I've had the second longest is also my first NFA item. This is a CZ Scorpion. I think the Evo S3, something like that. Evo 3 S1, there we go. So this has been my first NFA item. Made this into an SBR. I've probably shot this the most out of any handgun. About a few years ago, I passed the 10,000 mark with this one. After that, it started going downhill as far as what I started shooting. A lot more different handguns, other nine millimeters, like I had a Chris Vector and even a GHF9, which, uh, but I shot this one a lot 
a lot, a lot, and has been absolutely reliable. Um, it's pretty much stock. It has been stock for a while. This handguard I only got within like the last six, seven months or something like that. Uh, before then, it's been all stock. I like Magpul vertical grip. Now I have the Samson manufacturing one. Uh, as far as the optic, Steiner R1X, which is not a good optic. I think they discontinued that anyway. The suppressor, Bowers Verse 9S. This is a big can, and technically, this is a short version of the can, uh, but it does a good job at suppressing this firearm. I usually don't shoot without hearing protection, regardless if it's subsonic or supersonic, anything like that, but it does a great job. I'll do a few little tests right here to try it out. And it is a great performing can. It can also work on Supersonic 300 Blackout with the baffle upgrade I got on this one here. But this is definitely one of my favorite firearms, one I'm not going to get rid of. Really can't since it's an NFA item if I, unless someone lose out a lot of money. Uh, but I like it more than the Chris Vector as of right now. I like it more than GHM9. I have not owned a HK MP5 or one of those like clones, anything like that. I'm sure they're nice. I did own a SIG MPX. I got rid of that in favor of this one as well. As far as the price goes and then the aftermarket parts availability and the price of those aftermarket parts, I don't think it's really, I don't think any of them really beat that. I know the street bog's popular, but aftermarket's not there the mpx the price has gone way up i remember at one point they were getting close to 12 13 now they're close to 2000 now the attachments accessories for those are expensive the bnt gm9 apc9 the price isn't horrible on those the apc9 is over two thousand dollars but then the accessories you have stocks that are 400 600 dollars they're tactical ones stuff like that um, reliable, good price, under $1,000. Lots of aftermarket manufacturers making stuff for it. I believe this is definitely, definitely one of the top picks if you want a nice little nine millimeter sub gun. Um, I'm using that in quotations, but something like this, nine millimeter PCC, whatever you want to call it, I would definitely say give the Scorpion a look. So those are the CZ firearms. I hope eventually in the future to get to shoot more, get to own more. I've had a great experience with them. You know, one minor issue with the handgun I really don't like that much to begin with. Other than that, once I got them all in my possession, shot them, no issues. Probably looking at maybe 15, 16,000 rounds combined total with all these handguns and rifles right here. Well, nine millimeter worth. I'm not gonna count the CZ Brin. But, you know, if you're looking for some good quality firearms at a good price, definitely look at CZ. If you guys have any questions about any of them, feel free to ask. If you want a video and any specific ones, I have made some about the P10C. I've made one about the Brin. I don't think I've done any other videos in depth about any of these other ones that you see here but i appreciate you guys watching and take care